It's 1938. The world will soon descend into the chaos of war. Jewish chemist Lise Meitner flees Nazi Germany. When colleague Otto Hahn sends perplexing results from irradiated uranium, she realizes the atom has been split, unleashing tremendous power. Germany occupies Poland, and World War II breaks out. Albert Einstein warns President Roosevelt that Germany might develop an atomic bomb. The attack on Pearl Harbor jolts the U.S. into a war against Nazi Germany and Japan. They launch the Manhattan Project. Physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer coordinates thousands of researchers, aiming to win the race for the atomic bomb. Standing in the desert of New Mexico, witnessing the first atomic bomb test, Bhagavad Gita resonates in his mind. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Little Boy and Fat Man, the deadliest of destroyers, are dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. As images of destroyed cities reach the world, horror and outrage spread. A moral reckoning begins, laying the groundwork for anti-nuclear movements. Then, the Soviet Union tests its first atomic bomb, igniting a nuclear arms race that will shape the geopolitical landscape for decades. The world witnesses the dawn of a new era, as the U.S. detonates the first hydrogen bomb. The Russell Einstein Manifesto is issued, warning the world of catastrophic consequences of nuclear war. A few months later, the first Soviet H-bomb is successfully tested. Then, the Soviets launch Sputnik, the first satellite to orbit the Earth. Its rocket is designed to carry nuclear missiles, something the U.S. was working on as well. A wave of anti-nuclear protests emerge amidst escalating tensions and ever more powerful nuclear tests, like the Soviet Tsar Bomba, 3,300 times more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima. October 1962, the CIA uncovers Soviet nuclear missiles in Cuba. For 13 days, global peace hangs in the balance until Moscow backs down and removes the missiles. Shaken by the Cuban Missile Crisis, the U.S., the Soviet Union, and the U.K. sign the Limited Test Ban Treaty, banning nuclear tests in the atmosphere, underwater, and space. Ignoring this development, China soon conducts its first nuclear test in the atmosphere. As the world wonders who is next, Mexico leads Latin America to establish the first ever nuclear weapon-free zone. Then. The International Treaty on the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons is formalized, designed to halt the spread of nuclear weapons, promote disarmament, and foster the peaceful use of nuclear energy. Affected by public calls for a safer world, the superpowers agree on SALT-1, freezing the number of intercontinental missiles for five years, and the ABM Treaty, limiting the number of U.S. and Soviet ballistic missile defense systems. While India conducts its first nuclear test, the Helsinki Accords spark further East-West dialogue, only to be followed by renewed tensions and arms buildups in the years ahead. A global peace movement is born, leading to the largest anti-nuclear demonstration in history as one million people gather in New York. Meanwhile, France conducts a series of thermonuclear tests in the Pacific. In response, South Pacific nations unite, establishing a nuclear-free zone. Israel's nuclear weapons program is revealed weeks before Presidents Reagan and Gorbachev discuss nuclear abolition, leading to the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, prohibiting all U.S. and Soviet intermediate range missiles. As the new decade dawns, with hope for a safer world, South Africa joins the Non-Proliferation Treaty, and START-1 reduces the U.S. and Soviet arsenals by one-third. When the Soviet Union dissolves, Belarus, Kazakhstan, and Ukraine promise to give up on nuclear weapons. And START II demands the U.S. and Russia further reduce their strategic arsenals. Motivated by a global push for disarmament, nations in Southeast Asia and Africa establish nuclear weapon-free zone treaties, and the Non-Proliferation Treaty is extended indefinitely. The Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty is signed, banning all nuclear tests, a milestone in global disarmament. However, it will fail to be fully ratified, as key nations withhold approval. 
Concern grows as India and Pakistan conduct nuclear tests. Then, as humanity approaches a new millennium, 187 countries gather at the NPT Review Conference and agree to 13 practical steps toward the elimination of nuclear weapons. But the perception of where nuclear threats might emerge changes as the 9-11 attacks fuel fears of terrorists acquiring nukes. The Moscow Treaty commits US and Russia to further reduce their strategic arsenals. However, missile shields and new weapons stir tensions as nuclear powers backslide on their promises and modernize their arsenals. Now, North Korea conducts its first nuclear weapons test, and worries of Iran's nuclear ambitions grow. Still, momentum for a nuclear-free world builds, inspired by President Obama's 2009 pledge. The New START Treaty places limits on the deployment of strategic nuclear warheads and delivery systems. After years of negotiations, in exchange for sanctions relief, Iran agrees to curb its nuclear plans, and the first international treaty to fully prohibit nuclear weapons is signed. Still, long-standing arms control foundations start to erode. The US and Russia withdraw from the INF Treaty, a stabilizing factor since 1987. China, India, and Pakistan strengthen their arsenals, and North Korea remains a threat. Still, the US and Russia hold nearly 90% of nuclear weapons. Russia invades Ukraine, warning nuclear weapons may be used if the West intervenes. The nuclear order developed over the decades has collapsed. The world is horrified by the chaos of war and fear that nuclear weapons might be used in anger for the first time in 80 years. History shows we can commit to disarmament, but can we do it again?